Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new video of getassist.net and SEO series. In my last SEO related video, I explained to you what is on-page SEO and I'm sure even after watching that video, some of you must still be having doubts about it. So here I am back with another important video where I'm going to walk you through my complete on-page SEO checklist for 2021. Before I directly jump onto the on-page SEO checklist, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what is on-page SEO. On-page SEO is the process of optimizing a single page on your website. It lays the foundation for every website to rank higher in organic search results. Most people relate on-page SEO to just placing keywords on a page. No doubt keywords are important for on-page optimization, but there is much more to it. Mainly, on-page optimization includes keywords, copywriting, media, links, user experience and even conversion. Understanding and executing all these on-page SEO factors is important as it will determine how well your page will rank in Google. The checklist that I'm going to discuss will not only help you optimize your pages but will also help you to increase dwell time build rapport for your brand and even drive conversions. So now let's start with a checklist and show you how you can master on-page SEO. This goes without saying the title tag is a really important on-page ranking factor. That's why it is important to give proper attention to keyword placement in a title tag. The closer you keep the keyword to the beginning of the title, the more weight it has with search engines. So try to keep your title tag between 50 and 60 characters and be sure to keep the targeted keyword as close as you can to the beginning of your title tag. Have you ever noticed modifiers like best, easy, fast, 2021 or review in the beginning or at the end of a title tag? These are known as title tag modifiers and can help you rank for long tail versions of your keyword. So whenever you post a content on the web that can go well with a modifier, always use one and if you are updating the content, make sure to add the current year or the term updated as a modifier. H1 tag is used for your page title that is the top on page attribute. H1 tag helps Google understand the structure of your page. So make sure you use the target keyword in the H1 tag. Now when you use subheadings in your content, you need to use H2 tags to define them. And it would be great if you include your target keyword in one of your subheadings. Subheadings are great for breaking up the content and make pages easier to read. You can use H2 tags for all the subheadings in your content. If the subheadings have further headings, then you have to use H3 tags and this can go up to H6. URLs need to be short and keyword rich. Try to use your target keyword in your URL and avoid making it long as short URLs have proven to rank better in search results. Here is an example. For one of my articles, I have used this URL where I have also used the targeted keyword. So this one is more SEO friendly as compared to this one. Keywords are really important in on-page SEO and that is why while writing content, you need to carefully place your keywords. So here I have some tips for you to make the best use of keywords. Number one is you should try to use the target keyword within the first 100 or 150 words of your content. So it would be good if this is done naturally rather than forcefully. Some of you might have a habit of writing a long intro and then using the keyword halfway down the page. This should be avoided as it is not considered SEO friendly and will not keep the readers engaged as well. LSI that stands for Latent Semantic Indexing is a method used by Google and other search engines to study and compare relationships between different terms and concepts. LSI keywords can be used to improve SEO traffic and create more visibility and higher traffic in search results. 
LSI keywords are search terms related to the main keyword that you are targeting. They support your content and make it easier for both users and search engines to know what your content is about. Next thing that you need to keep in mind is to avoid keyword cannibalization. Keyword cannibalization is when the same keyword or phrase is optimized or used for multiple pages on a website. This can create a confusion as search engines will not be able to understand that which page they have to show for a given search query. Here is a simple example from my website. I have written two articles. One is about creating a new Yahoo account and the other is about how to log into a Yahoo account. Now, in this case, if I will also use the keyword create a Yahoo account in Yahoo login article, this will lead to keyword cannibalization. However, I have still used it once for internal linking that I am going to discuss in my next point. Content plays the most important role in on-page SEO. Hence, you need to take care of a lot of things while writing your content to make it SEO friendly. While writing your content, you should always link it to official sites to show Google that you are putting out quality information on the web. When you link your website with other relevant and reputable websites, this will improve page rankings and Google will be able to understand what your web page is all about. It is also a good SEO practice to use two to three internal links in every content that you post on your website. Internal linking helps Google find understand and index all the pages on your website. Also try using keyword rich anchor text while internal linking as this helps users and Google understand what the page you are linking is about. Also make sure all your blog posts and articles have more than 1000 words of content. Longer content will help you rank better for your target keyword and will also attract more long tail traffic opportunities. In addition to this, longer content tends to acquire more backlinks and rank higher in organic search. Also make sure to avoid any grammatical and spelling errors in your content as this can make it difficult for the readers to understand the content and will also negatively affect your search results. The use of images, videos and other multimedia on your pages can help in reducing bounce rate and increasing dwell time on your website. The use of images allows you to break up your content and you can also include the target keyword in your image alt tag. Also don't forget to provide a brief description of your image in the file name. By writing long engaging content using images and videos as I already explained, you can increase how long visitors stay on your page. Higher dwell time or time on page gives a strong signal to search engines that the content on your web page matches visitors search intent. Your meta description should be unique, contain the target keyword or keyword phrase and should be between 150 to 160 characters in length. Most of the time, if your meta description has the exact keyword the user is searching for, Google will bold the keyword in the search results. This will make more people click on your web page on the search results page and will also optimize your CTR. However, Google may sometimes not pick your meta description. Instead, it selects the answer to search query wherever it is mentioned on your web page. But that's not an issue if you are using the right keyword and providing the required solutions in your content. The next thing you need to do is to make sure your web page is able to be indexed. For this, you need to make sure that you haven't applied a no index tag to your pages as this will restrict search engines from accessing your content. Non-indexed pages will never show in search results as they cannot be crawled by search engine bots. You can also use the URL inspection tool feature in Search Console to submit your newly published URL and the inspector will test whether your page is able to be indexed or not. If it is not, click on request indexing and Google bot will then visit your web page, crawl across its content and index it. This tool will also help if you have updated your content. HTTPS is a secure way to transfer data between a server and a web browser. Google officially announced that they would use HTTPS as a ranking signal in 2014. Also, multiple studies have shown a strong relationship between 
higher rankings and websites using HTTPS. So make sure your website is also using HTTPS. As for the data compiled by Hrefs, Google will drop web pages in search results if our page has broken links pointing to external sources. So it is important to regularly scan your website for broken links or it would be better if you completely remove the link or link it to a new piece of content. Optimizing CTR is another important aspect as this will determine how high you will rank in search results. As per a study by WordStream, if you are able to beat the expected CTR of your position in the search results, you are far more likely to rank in more prominent positions. And if you are not able to meet the expected CTR, you will start to appear in lower positions. Two key factors that can get you increased CTR are improving your page title by adding modifiers to your title and using keyword rich meta descriptions to help searchers understand what your page is about in search results and I have already explained you both of these factors. Voice search is on the rise and in 2021 almost 50% of all searches are voice based. That clearly means you need to optimize your content for voice searching by providing short and concise answers like 25 to 30 words for questions that are related to your keyword topic. One easy way to do this is by adding a FAQ section to your web page. It was in 2015 when Google announced that mobile friendly compliance will be a ranking signal for searches done through mobile devices. Google is also prioritizing mobile first indexing, hence it is important that your website must be mobile friendly to get higher ranks in search engines in 2021. You can run your website or an individual URL through Google's mobile friendly testing tool to find errors and then to fix them. The speed of a website is an official ranking factor as stated by Google in 2010. In 2018, Google announced using mobile page speed results and shifting to mobile first indexing. This means Google will use the mobile version of your content for indexing and ranking instead of the desktop version. This makes it important that your website can load quickly on mobile devices. You can use Google's tool Page Speed Insights to figure out your mobile page speed and how you can improve if required. A crawl error means that Google cannot see or read what your page is about. Being unable to view your page means that Google may not index or rank that page in search results. You can easily identify crawl errors using the Google Search Console. Once you log in, click on Coverage located on the left hand menu. There you will be able to view all URLs that contain errors and then you can fix them. So yeah, with that, we have reached the end of the video. I hope my on-page SEO checklist will be of help for you. And if you have any doubts or queries regarding anything related to SEO, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. You can also write your suggestions and feedback for our SEO series. And for now, I will take the leave. We'll be back soon with a new video.